What's up everyone and welcome to today's video where I want to update you on a few things in regards to Google Ads Performance Max campaigns because yes, it seems that Google Ads listens to us advertisers uh, for once and uh, they are making some good changes to Performance Max and especially to the reporting side of things as well. So in this video, I want to share three updates with you that I believe are super, super important. And without any further ado, let's get started. So the first update, that's actually not live yet, but it will be soon. According to Google, um, they want to do this in late 2024. And this is adding negative keywords on the campaign level for Performance Max. So little recap, at the moment you can actually use negative keywords, but you can only do it on the account level as I've showed uh, or as I'm showing here on the screenshot, right? If you are in the account settings of your Google Ads account, you can add an account wide negative keyword list and this will apply to all your campaigns, including Performance Max. This is you know, a way to at least get a little bit of control. But as you can imagine, of course, that is not ideal. So how this might help once Google has implemented this is that Pmax becomes a lot more viable in like super specific niches, right? If you are in a very, very narrow space and you need negative keywords and ideally on the campaign level, this will definitely or should definitely increase your performance and it may enable you to use Pmax campaigns where previously you thought, you know, probably not that ideal. Then you will have more control versus account level negatives, of course. Right now with account negatives, yes, it's better than nothing, but you cannot really distinguish, right? Maybe there's a campaign where you want to use those negatives, maybe there is another one where you don't. And most importantly, you will share those, of, of course, across all your campaigns, across all your search campaigns, across all your shopping campaigns. And most of the time, at least for us, we don't want a single list for everything. So we have to be very careful about what exactly we are using uh, and what exactly we're putting into those account level negative keyword lists because maybe we just want them in a single or just two campaigns. And then last but not least, I don't know exactly how they will implement it, whether we can just add them straight to the campaign or whether we can use negative keyword lists just as with the other campaigns, in which case, of course, also the management would be a lot easier because I'm not a big fan of adding keywords directly as negative to the campaign. I definitely prefer using lists. Now, let's talk about the second change here that is already live. I'm not sure if it's the case for all accounts. I just, um, uh, this is a relatively new update where you can see asset level performance within Performance Max, okay? So you are probably familiar with that performance indicator right here where it basically says, you know, best, good or poor or not enough data. Um, and this is of course already a good indication if you're looking into your asset groups and Pmax whether an asset is actually performing well. So one best practice that I also mentioned in my, uh, you know, large Pmax setup video guide that you can check here right after that video here as well, where I talk for almost an hour about how you can set up the perfect Pmax campaign. One best practice is to replace underperforming assets, especially the ones that Google says are performing poorly, right? But now what you have in a bunch of uh, accounts, as I said, is that you can actually look at conversions, conversion value and value per, per conversion, for example, as well. Now, I'm not 100% sure yet how this is working because technically, of course, you have normally a combination of like headline and description or an image and, you know, and so on and so forth. So these conversions, when you add them up, of course, shouldn't, should surpass the total amount of conversions in your campaign, right? Because multiple assets can show at once. So I'm not 100% sure yet how this will be used um, in the future for perfect reporting, but this definitely helps. And that's definitely better than just having this performance column right there that can be a little bit vague. And this again, I believe should be live for virtually all accounts. I double checked once again for some accounts where we are not actively using Pmax right now anymore. And at least we have these columns. So I assume that this is virtually alive for you know the vast majority, if not all Pmax campaigns and accounts in that sense. So how this helps is first of all with better asset optimization, right? You can specifically optimize or replace underperforming assets more specifically. As I said, previously we had this good, um, best and poor indication, which helps, but this of course now is um, a lot more specific and you have actual numbers and actual data, which is always better than just this like rough indication. 
Also, those inside are, uh, insights are not just relative, right? When it says best, good, and poor, um, first of all, it's vague, as I said, but it can also be very relative. And now we have these absolute insights. Okay, asset A generated 70 conversions and asset B generated, you know, 25 conversions and so on and so forth, much, much better. And then also you can now identify totally unprofitable or super overly expensive assets. If you notice that you're, you know, um, that, that an asset gets a lot of attention, but it's not generating any conversions or just a handful of those, or maybe they are simply super expensive, the cost per conversion is very high. You will now be able to compare that to Google's estimation, right? What does a poor performing asset actually mean? What does a best performing asset mean? Does it mean that an asset is like super expensive, but generating some conversions? So this will be very interesting now. To be honest, we didn't have, or we haven't done a full scale comparison here yet across all campaigns. I have a tendency, but um, I will definitely share that in one of the the future videos where I can then talk a little bit more about, okay, how does a good asset correlate with conversion data or a best asset with conversion data or a poor asset, okay? So I think this will definitely help in identifying uh, super expensive or also amazing assets. And then last but not least, we have a third update and that is impression share for Performance Max. Another very, very big thing. I mean, <clears throat> previously you had some insights into some Pmax, um, competitive metrics, right? How do you rank against other competitors and so on and so forth. But the real specific campaign level search impression share, search lost impression share, just as you were used to from shopping and search has never been available with Pmax. And now it is for, I don't know exactly how long, right? I've been working with that for a little while now, but um, I still count that as a fairly new update. You know, again, not sure whether it's live in all of your accounts. I think it is, but not 100% sure. Now, what are the benefits of that? Again, super, super interesting, super powerful. The first thing is that now you understand when to stop budget increases. With Pmax, it was never that clear, right? It, was, it is this very, very large campaign type. We have a bunch of examples where we spend thousands of euros or thousands of dollars per day on performance max, you know, individual performance max campaigns. And so far, it was always a bit difficult to tell when did we actually reach saturation, especially when you run a Pmax campaign on max conversion value instead of a target ROAS. It wasn't always that easy to tell whether you can spend 30% more, 10% more or nothing at all. And now you know, okay, we have a 95% search impression share. Probably it's not the best idea to spend a lot more money on Pmax or try to spend a lot more money on that Pmax campaign because a high share typically means that a Pmax campaign might now spend more on display and YouTube once you try to scale further. You can imagine, let's say you spend $1,000 per day on a Pmax campaign and Google says you have a search impression share of like 94%, right? Or it doesn't have to be even that high, but let's say in that range. Um, you can imagine that if you now try to spend $1,500 per day, you are not scaling by another 50% on the shopping and search network, but rather this budget will probably go into um, display, you know, YouTube and all these visual networks in the first place. This doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing because Google is becoming more and more like of a, um, you know, push marketing channel, which can be very powerful because it means it's more scalable. But if your assets aren't designed for it, or if you simply don't see any performance on these push marketing channels and all your sales are coming from shopping and search, then this is an indication that you probably shouldn't scale because now all the additional spend will be on those networks that are not performing as well. And then also, you can now compare your Pmax with shopping and search more easily, which is also very powerful, right? You have a shopping campaign, you have a search campaign, you have a Pmax campaign, and now you can compare, okay, where are we hitting some saturation, right? Where do you want to make further adjustments? Can you combine them? Should you consolidate, segment them, whatever it might be? I believe that will also be very important when running Pmax campaigns in conjunction with other campaigns, which is what we are doing in virtually all accounts. I don't think that we have a single account where we are relying completely or entirely on Pmax. Of course, we have some with a strong tendency for Pmax and then others where we don't use Pmax at all, but uh, we don't have a Pmax only account in that sense, right? And I think that's pretty important because you want to stay a little bit flexible and you also, also want to retain some control in that whole sense. So those were three major updates that are either coming soon or already implemented. And if you now say, 
hey, um, even with those updates that make management a bit easier, I still have issues scaling my campaigns to the next level. I still believe that I hit an invisible ceiling and I cannot scale past that. I'm not happy with my ROAS. I want to finally hit those 300, 400, 500,000 per month on Google or more. Then check the link in the description for an Ignite call with us where I talk with you um, about how we can take your brand to the next level in terms of revenue and ROAS specifically. And in the worst case, Basically, you get a detailed roadmap for what you should do next. And in the best case, you know, we find a way to work together on it so that we can take your brand to six, multiple six or even seven figures per month in revenue as we have done in the past as well. So with that being said, thanks for watching. Leave a like. Uh, let me know in the comments which of these features you are already using and also subscribe to not miss out on any Google Ads PPC for e-commerce content. Thank you very much. I look forward to see you in the next video again and bye-bye.